Hey guys, Stefan here, and this week I'm here to review not a photo book for you, but an application. The one I want to talk to you about today is called Landscape Pro, and it's a really um, amazing little app that allows you to do many amazing editing, magical editing little things to your pictures and enhance them in a few clicks without having the lengthy process of learning how to use Photoshop. Uh, the software is kind of in between Apple Photos, Instagram and Photoshop so it has far more advanced features than a simple editor but it doesn't quite have all the functions that you could have in Photoshop. But the price is so small and the things you can do with it are so varied and so vast that I think it's really worth a try, even if you just do the trial, uh, have a look at it and see how it works out for you. Just before I start talking about the software at all, I have a discount code for you. Use PBG10 to get 10% off your checkout uh, final total. The code works even if there is another offer on the website. So for example, uh, sometimes I see 50% off limited time offer. Even if you see that on, you can still apply the code photobooguru 10 and you would get 60% off. So use the code if you like the software to get it at a cheaper price. The full price is £59.99. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in dollars. It depends on the exchange rate, but around um, $80, $90 I would say. There are three versions to the app. One is the basic, which gives you all the features that I was talking about. There is a studio version, which allows you to use the software as, an, as a built-in plugin in Photoshop or Lightroom. And also there is a Studio Max version, which is slightly more expensive, and it allows you to create batch um, changes. So if you come up with one effect that you really like and uh, you want to apply this to many, many photos, you don't have to redo it every single time. You can just create a batch um, process. So to sum it up in one sentence, why this software is different to the others, because it can treat uh, certain areas of the picture different to the other. Most editors affect pictures as a whole, so if you change brightness the whole picture is going to change. While it's in Landscape Pro you can easily select areas like the sky, buildings, trees, water and all kinds of elements in the photo and apply separate effects to all these areas separately. One of the best features about the software is the sky replacement which you probably saw in most of the ads and videos on YouTube. The software is working really well with replacing skies and the good thing about this it's not a dummy effect so it's not only changing the sky but it's going to change the whole atmosphere of the picture according to the sky that you change to give you the most realistic uh, results you can possibly get. Now, um, this is about the software. Uh, in a few minutes I'm going to take you through a walkthrough and you can see what you can do, what are the features and how easy it is to navigate inside. So stay with me for that. But before, what are the good things about it and what are the bad things about it? Well, to start with, the price is extremely small given the features you get. Secondly, it's extremely user-friendly and you don't need to spend hours and hours on learning how to use it. It's very, very easy. It gives you continuous uh, tips by the side so you can learn as you go. The thing that I liked most about it was that it allows you to treat certain elements in the photo separately and this is such a big advantage which previously you could only do in uh, very professional, expensive apps like Photoshop. The number of skies available in the app are insane. There are so, so many options and if you are careful and you know what you're doing and you watch out where the light is coming from and you're trying to create a realistic result, I don't see any reason why you couldn't get that. Obviously, when something is extremely user-friendly, it's always going to have some drawbacks. So compared to Photoshop, uh, some of the features are going to be limited, which is understandable. Uh, so for example, if you want to use brushes, you're not going to have so many options regarding the, the type of the brush and the opacity and things like that. Also, you can't do any layering inside the app and you can't do any cloning or some features were missing like sharpening, for example. However, there are two sister softwares to Landscape Pro. One is called Portrait Professional, which works best on portrait and skin smoothing and things like that and putting makeup on yourself. And there's also Smart Photo Editor, which has all the features that I was missing from Landscape Pro. So I think they were kind of separating it into three separate apps 
but uh, if you get smart photo as well, then you have everything that you need. So all in all, I think it's an extremely creative application and it's reduced the time I spend on images to a fraction of it that I used to spend in Photoshop. Obviously, I'm still using Photoshop as well every now and then, but so many things that I could only do in Photoshop before in a much longer time I can do now in Landscape Pro. And besides, it's also giving me ideas that I didn't have before. So it's giving you so many presets that you wouldn't necessarily come up with by yourself. So presets are sometimes a pain to use because they change too many things, but sometimes they're an inspiration to the things that you can do that you didn't think about before. So let me show you now a walk through the features inside Landscape Pro. This is the panel that loads up when you start the application. I'm just going to start with an image. So let me open this one, the recent file here. And it's giving you loads of handy tips on what to do if you're new to it. The first thing you need to do is to select the areas. So basically the layers that the application is going to work with. And this is the biggest strength of the software because it's capable of uh, treating certain elements in the photo separately. So you can get much more uh, diverse results and a lot more um, options to, to edit your pictures. So what you need to do is decide what is what. So I'm going to drag the sky to the sky. Then I'm going to drag water to the water and also building to this. So let's go on, click continue and here again it's showing you that you can fine tune these. Obviously there's an algorithm that's trying to guess where things finish and where things start but nothing can be perfect especially if you have very soft shades like here around the water. So what you need to do is extend so you, you click on the on the element that you want to extend and just drag it and it's really really easy to fine tune it and just finish it up. I'm not going to do it perfectly now just for the sake of demonstration um, and also I can do the same with the water just get it all scrolled in and then you continue again and the last thing you need to select is the horizon line so it's giving you a horizontal line here and you have to adjust where the horizon would be. This is especially really important if you want to replace the sky with the sun or clouds or whatever so it looks more natural. And click continue. Alright, so here are all the features that we can use. The first one is global presets. And in this one you get some really rough um, ideas of what you can do. So. For example, here is a cloudy sunset. As you can see, it changes the sky. And also, it's really important to note that when you change the sky or any element in the photo, it's always going to adjust the atmosphere of the whole entire image. So just to show you a few more of these presets, deep sky, and then let me show you one more noon, which will be more um, realistic. Sunrise is probably one of the most suitable ones. Um, watercolor really pretty lavender. So these are some of the built-in presets that you can choose from. I'm just going to disable these and then go on to light brushes. So the lighting brushes are extremely important if you want to balance your highlights and shadows. If you have any areas in the photo which are underexposed or overexposed you can easily correct it. It's basically uh, brightening and, and darkening but not the whole image but just certain areas. So let me show you select a wide brush, uh, lighten the opacity down to half. As you can see it's already brightening up the area here in the middle. My computer is a little bit slow for this but it's working really really well. So um, that's about the brushes. Obviously you can do the darken if you have overexposed areas like this one here. Let's go on. The next one is whole image. So here you've got presets which are very similar to the ones that you see in the global presets but these are not replacing the sky, these are basically giving you atmospheres so let's see um, the contrast one it's giving you very strong contrast, desaturate, uh, improver, sharp, um, sunrise this one is actually really pretty, it gives you very soft tones and then the good thing here as with the other features as well, 
if you click on the sliders you can fine-tune every single little detail so here you can adjust the high and low key um, auto white balance uh, auto levels flatten the histogram uh, exposure recovery uh, exposure is much stronger than the recovery fill light into the underexposed areas blacks um, vibrant saturation colorfulness presence contrast dehaze which is a very very uh, useful tool temperature warmer colder and tint and now here are the atmospheres that you can choose from these are again presets if I go to um, snow for example then you can adjust how much of the atmosphere you want to copy onto the image so let's go on black and white and vignette again says in the name you can select nice vignettes uh, black and white and some strange colors here if you want to do some vintage stuff and again you can go into the sliders choose the color of the vignette which is very very good and the opacity of how black and white you want it to be and the vignette whether you want it to be darker and you can select um, the radius as well how big the full up you want to be uh, depth. Now this is again very very nice. Uh, it can change uh, the depth of field in your pictures. So you can go into subtle, uh, haze, violet, distant pool and um, as you can see in the sky here you're getting now some haze and some blur. So it's trying to create a focus on the, on the buildings as opposed to the sky and you can also see that here down in the in the bottom of the sea there's also some blurring going on so the focus is on the middle now obviously you can fine-tune this but it gives you again very very different um, options to work with and the next feature is probably the most popular of all especially in the ads is the sky replacement so here you've got so many options it's unbelievable things you can do here's the first one uh, I'm just going to show you a few very quickly so you can see the different uh, sky replacements. Zero cumulus to. So, as you can see, when you change the sky, the whole entire atmosphere of the picture is changing and the colors and the color balance and all these things as well. Uh, clear moon, uh, red, clear sunset. It's very nice. Cloudy sunrise. Now again, here, when, when you do something like this, you have to be extremely careful. If the sun is there, you can't have sunshine on this side of the building. It just doesn't look real. Uh, another cloudy sunrise. Ooh. Cotton clouds, very cute. Dark swirling. Dramatic sunrise. It's really nice. And let me show you the ones that you use. And you can obviously do night skies as well. It sometimes works really well despite having some light here. Uh, and the really famous ones are the ones with the birds. And let me show you. That's it. So you can do stuff like that. Now let me show you the really smart thing about these replacements. Now if you go to the sliders again, you can fine tune everything. Here is again, you can copy the colors, the atmosphere. This is the original picture with the blue sky. And then you can copy the blue sky color correction to the actual picture and again you've got exposure texture uh, temperature tint sky edge which you can work with especially if you did a really bad job with the uh, selection like me dehaze again which is a very useful filter and here are the separate clouds that you can choose so again if I go to vanilla then it's going to change to vanilla but I would need to adjust the atmosphere to something warmer. So when you start playing with these two features together, the options are endless and some of them are so realistic and look amazing. You just have to really think about where the picture was taken and where would the sun be and what would look slightly more natural. Um, so let's go on from sky replacement to water. Here again, you can change the water, you can change it to uh, turquoise, uh, moonlight, and again you've got the sliders and you also have presets 
let's go on to the unlabeled my middle area is the buildings so I'm going to go straight to the buildings but if I didn't select this as buildings it would be unlabeled so anything not selected in the beginning in the areas is going to be under unlabeled now if you go to the building you can uh, again have presets for the building and the usual sliders where you can work just with the buildings and leave the sky and the water alone so let's just increase the contrast a little bit uh, high key up and as you can see it's only affecting this area in the middle so it is again amazing that you can do it in a simple app without going into photoshop and working with layers and layers and uh, composition and things like that uh, lighting you can relight your picture uh, with the sliders or using presets and some basic fixes, denoise, uh, straighten and things like that. So if you have any questions leave them in the comments box I'm going to try to answer them. Again the code is PBG10 to get 10 extra percent off your final total. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, coming up next is going to be Portrait Professional from the same company which works on smoothing out your skin. Subscribe for more, thank you.